after day one, all we did was paint <laughs> targets. Peter, you want to talk about how painting targets went? <laughs> Well, I've learned that spray paint tastes very bitter. <laughs> <laughs> so so Walt, Walt, uh, Walt sends us out to paint this target. It's a sucky hike. He's not feeling that great because that's what it would take to stop that man. Yeah. He's unstoppable. Um, so he sends us out with a 30-foot long extension pole with a little circle clamp on it, a little foot, you put the spray paint can in it, and then there's a little hinge tab. And then there's a string that goes down to that. So you pull the string, and it sprays the spray paint top. So you have two of us out there trying to spray paint this target in 17 mile per hour wind. And this thing's like, whoa, 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 like that. So it's going terrible where you're burying it, you're not getting where you want, it's all over the place. And uh, I look at Peter and I look at the angle of play and I'm like, hey, do you want to come stand over here? Because at this point in time, he's pulling the string and I'm using the pole. So you have these like stacking tolerances exactly. there that are not going well. He's like, no, I'm good. It wasn't but a minute or so later, but I'm burying paint on this plate that it finally makes its way off the bottom edge. And I've been watching the plate go to the perfect angle and the wind. So the wind call was actually really good. I mean, it came out, curved, and went right down. He takes about five drops on his face, two of which are sitting <laughs> right here. And then the greatest act of sympathy, I cried, I laughed so hard. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good sport about it. So leading into it, we, we got two things very, very right. Devotions and extra shots of espresso. Those were, the, those were the critical wins for the day that started it on the right trajectory that played out. You're, you're getting ready to go, you get your coffee, you get driving down the road, and you know, I had to cycle through a bunch of bad music, um, you know, to find the song that kind of got you hyped up. <laughs> the whole drive in there, I'm, I'm just thinking about what I'm doing and what my job is and cycling the bolt, how many rounds you're running, where the targets are, and just working through that whole process so I can get it ingrained into my subconscious. So when I'm actually there, it all happens at a subconscious level and I don't have to think about it because if something goes wrong, you need that to be functioning just at a different level. So there was a lot of mental prep for me of just focusing in to do my job and that's what's been so spectacular about working with Mike is I know Mike's gonna hold his side. I know Mike's gonna do his job well and he's gonna do his side, so I don't have to worry about that. That allows me to focus in on what, what I'm doing and doing my job. And so it's a gift to have such a competent teammate to be able to work with to where you can focus on. So we'd pulled up, we, we found out that I was gonna be the second shooter uh, for the day, which is awesome. So it was gonna give us some time to prep and get us in honestly in some good conditions. There's, there's some luck of the draw when it comes to it because the longer the day goes, the, the worse the conditions uh, are as well. You know, I saw some guys do just some phenomenal work. So even some of the guys that finished middle of the pack, you know, I think they they were very deserving of being up there with us in the finals just due to the work they did mm -hmm. in some really sucky conditions. You know, and I have so much respect for a lot of those guys and their ability to call wind in some rough, mm -hmm. rough times. So we find out we're, we're going to be second. You know, we get our stuff. We start prepping, get on the line. Now, thanks to Mike shooting first, I had a pretty good idea of where I wanted my bipod to be. I was going to have my bipod legs on the ground, and I had figured out exactly where my bag needed to be. So I memorized every bag position for every target. I was gonna shoot the first two targets uh, with the bipod legs on the ground, hop them up onto the mat, and then start shooting the high targets from there. And so I was just working through all of that, getting that memorized, working through my data and getting my data memorized, even though I'm still gonna check it. I'm just laying there, I'm doing my breathing exercises, trying to stay calm. Yes. All of this trapped in your mind. 
Sir, are you okay? I'm a little messed up. You know, it was almost like being back at Bob's farm. I was able to achieve kind of that Zen moment of being calm. And then that's where it got interesting and yet another evolution of the emotional roller coaster. So the lady next to me shooting and what Walt would do is he would count down their rounds, three rounds to go, two rounds to go. And as soon as he says two rounds to go, I hop over, roll over, dial my elevation on the gun and I go to dial my windage knob to dial my spin drift and Coriolis. It clicks once and then goes Bleh there are no more clicks. So my windage knob has just slipped. So I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, oh no. And I'm like, Peter, Peter Allen keys good. fast. So I'm like, Peter. And luckily Peter was over the camera and I'm like, Peter, grab the Allen keys. And so we have about five sets of Allen keys between the two of us. Peter's awesome, he runs over, but I knew where they were. I knew what it was. And this whole time I'm like, stay calm. I'm like, just stay calm, focus, get the red Allen key thing, you know it's the smallest one, put it in and I'm like staring at it, get it in there, turn it, tighten it, you've already clicked one, click three more, last round fires, he's like, Pete, go ahead and load. And I'm like, Whoo. right? And so we get ready to fire, we wait for the cameras to be good, and that's when Mike gives me a baller wind call. And we send that first round and it just dunks on the cold bore. And that was the moment you're like, all right, let's freaking do this. <laughs> Shooter, time starts now. Up. Dan R, send it. That a boy, Mike! That a boy, Mike! All right, what's your elevation? All right, I got 3.2 on the gun. I got four dialed in. Hey, that caught right side of plate, barely low. All right, come in. I want Dan R. Dan R? Dan R. Up. Yeah, they're Send it. rendering artifacts. That boy, Mike. Insane. <laughs> Up. Send it. Uh, yeah. Send this same. What? This isn't yours. No. All right, let's go to point. Up at eight. There All we right, go. We got elevation. point. Uh, All sure. right, I got eight on elevation. I got point five up. You're not sure. Uh, I think it hit the strap. Okay. Oh, uh, come on. All right, let's zoom out. All right, there's that. Give it a toe right there. Got eight dialed in. Give me Dan Sand. Dan Sand. Dan Sand. All right. All right, let's see. I got six on the gun. All right. What's your windage? I got six on the gun. Come on. All right, up at Dan Sand. Send it. I got right. it. That Come is, back. that is, uh, Come back. Dan barely off. Give me left edge. Give me left edge. Up. Send. Mike, I'm coming back in. I got it. All right, hold dead. Hold dead center. Up. Send. Impact. There we go. There we go. All right. Move up. Set that in. Medium bag. All right, I'm going to dial 11.7. There we go. I got 0.6 on the gun still. I got three rounds here. All right. All Turn right. Your windage. I windage. I got 0.6 dialed in. All right. Yes, give me Dan R. 
DNR. Up. Send. Come back dead center. I'm still way, way high. Yeah, you're going to be. Up. You're gonna need Send. Where was Down it? One tenth. Keep watching wind for Up. Tell Send. What you see? Come on. Back right edge. Okay, they're right on the right side or Up. Send. All right. All right, I'm gonna go 14. So that's 12 to 14.4. There we go. I got 0.8 on. 0 0.8, there we go. Find her real quick. Dan R. Wright. I'm gonna favor a little low. Up. Send it. Send same, send same. Was that that? Actually, come back, Dan. That was a hit. Yeah. Give me, give me Dan, Dan Sand, uh, right. Camera's hitched. Oh, camera's dead. That's all right, fine. it's all right. Dan Sand right, Peter. Up. Send. Okay, sorry. I just felt so good. I mean, we might as well have been shooting on any range. I, I was able to feel so calm through it because we had such good prep going into it. Mm -hmm. It was just a fun, let's just work through it. And Mike made a baller win call. We got went three for three on the next one, you know, got on it, dialed, moved to the next one. We had to play with the wind just a little bit because the wind had literally shifted from the time we transitioned the first two targets. We went from holding off left to holding off right. It completely turned on us in the middle of our run. So we made our adjustments, ended up getting a third round hit on that plate, jumped out to the third one, which had been pretty challenging for everybody because it had this really squirrely effect out there. Uh, we ran three, didn't get it within three because you had to get a hit within the first three to score, but we got that fourth round hit. And then Mike brought me into the fourth target and we went first and second round on it, which was pretty awesome. You know, it's pretty cool to put a first round hit on a 2,500 yard target. Yeah. So, so that was cool, you know, but it was such a fun experience and it was really cool just to execute our process well. Mike crushed it. I, I couldn't have had a, a better spotter period and so it was super fun but checking that checking that back target getting the first yeah. round hit felt awesome that and that cold bore was so much fun it was awesome once we got to the line you know a little bit of tension there with the with the windage knob not not wanting to dial but you, you guys handled that like beautifully and uh yeah i have to say that you know from a from a spotter standpoint being able to hit that cold bore and I mean, I saw where it hit. It was like we were we were close to, you know, dead center of it. It was a little right of the the dead center of the plate, and it's what a twelve or sixteen inch circle yeah, plate. It's about this big with no background, and so if you miss it, you get no feedback because we hit the the cold bore, because we had been seeing the the wind as clearly as we could. We moved to that that first real target, and. But, you know, we could we could just own it, and we had nine minutes to to move through the entire sequence of targets. I never felt rushed. You mm. know, you seemed like you were were comfortable behind the gun. You weren't chasing it or looking for anything. We could we were communicating well. We were communicating in Mandarin, and <laughs> and never had any question about 
you know, what the call was or where the hold needed to be, and we were getting the hits. I, I wanted I wanted you to be in the final. I I, I knew there that two it, of us. I, yeah, I, I knew that it, it you know my my round wasn't going to do it after as many people shot, but uh, you know with the with the round that you were having, you know, and and then to be able to check that last plate twice. I mean, I I had a calming letdown after after your run because I, I thought we had done well, but we finished with. Almost two minutes left. I think it was even more than that. No, you had. You had was it more than that? Finished in probably just around five minutes. Okay, so it was we even finished, more. pulled all of our stuff off the line, walked down to the bottom of the parking lot, and were calling Bob when his timer went off. So we 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 had a good measured pace, <laughs> and and it you know it it felt like a good run. Guys were coming off the line. We figured out pays to have really smart friends. The two of them figured out where to pull the score sheet because nobody actually knows how to calculate the scores. So they figured out how to pull the score sheet down. So we have an iPad trying to figure out everybody's scores through that. So we spent the rest of the day kind of figuring out what everybody was doing and everybody's watching each other. So it was really a lot of fun. When we had been able to calculate your score, yeah. you were over 40,000 points. And the way the shooters from the day before and everybody that had been stacking in, it looked like, you know, statistically, you, you were in that top percentage of, of shooters. And so it was hold your breath through the rest of the day, but yeah. you know, by, by the end of the day, it, it was obvious you were, you were in the top 15. What were you, four, yeah, the, 14th over? I was 14th, so just by the hair of my chinny chin chin. But we made it in, you know, because it's a pretty challenging match in the fact that they only take 15 shooters for the finals. Having the top 15 go in, you know, you got you to gotta bring your A game because it's, it's all really good people. So after day two, all the first targets are shot. We now have to move all the cameras over to the finals or day three. So it had been raining or there's a big threat of rain and going up the mountain roads, they're super dicey, super steep, no shoulder. Like if you skip off the side of that road, you're gonna, you're gonna take a Santa Claus ride to the afterlife. So we asked Walt, we're like, hey, Walt, can we take your side-by-side -side for this? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. So we take two side-by-sides up the hill because if it starts raining and that road gets slick, our rental expedition with road tires was not going to be the right vehicle to have. We probably would have ended up camping up there. We do some gnarly hiking, and this is where, you know, one of them, Peter, ends up making his own expedition, <laughs> which was insane. I, I didn't, I watched the footage and I was like, Holy crap. This is definitely not the safest thing. <laughs> So he's, uh, he's hiking across this super steep rock face that has no backup plan. Yeah. There's just no backup plan over there. To the right, your afterlife. <laughs> to the left, everybody else. <laughs> so Peter's hiking through that. We do some gnarly hiking. Well, it's starting to get dark. Little well, Tessa, Walt's girlfriend, sends me a text and is like, hey, by the way, just want to let you know that... Uh, the side-by-side -side doesn't have any headlights. So now we're on a mountain with super steep roads, no backup plan, and no headlights. So we get all the cameras moved, and now we're driving down the mountain with a, with a headlight and a pistol light <laughs> to light our road as we're going down. And it, it ended up being this crazy, crazy ride and adventure as you're bouncing around all the rocks and moving through and trying to make sure you're going the right way. It was truly a hilarious experience. Uh, we laughed and laughed. <laughs> You 
you know, it was kind of each day just got a little more and more epic, yeah. you know, in the adventure and what happened and the craziness of it all. But that's one we'll tell for a long time right there. <laughs> so I had the gun resting just like that on the windowsill and it depressed the mag release. So at one point we're going down and I hear a thunk and I'm like, the I thunk is his magazine bouncing off the hood of the side by side. <laughs> Did you find it? Yep, we're good. <laughs> we we get a, another decent draw, honestly, for the final day. We're gonna shoot six, which with only 15 shooters, most of the spots aren't gonna be too bad because you can roll through the shooters pretty quick. We're getting down there, I'm, I'm seeing it, I'm doing my breathing, I'm trying to envision everything, get, get the bag set up, get where I wanna be figured out, transition to all the different targets, moving through all that, just kinda of getting our system nailed down. And he's counting down rounds, and then all right, he's, you know, Walt starts telling me to load and get ready and it dawns on me, you know what, I should probably bring rifle ammo with me. His rifle shoots a whole lot better with rifle ammo. So once again, right before I'm getting ready to shoot, we have to solve our next uh, minor crisis. Once again, it was because of all of our preparation and because of how hard we worked and because of how hard Bob had drilled us, you know, because Bob was always pushing us, shoot faster, you guys got to get your crap together, don't suck. You go to eat lightning, you go to crap thunder. He never actually said that last part, but you know, he's pushing and so, we had been used to shooting, you know, in this environment. And so it made it really easy to be calm because, well, we just spent a lot of time there. That first target, I remember, we, we had a chance to watch the wind and we, we felt like we had a, a pretty good run at it. There, there were a lot of people that had shot at it. There were a handful of hits. Pete, time starts now. All right, give me point three right, send. I didn't see it. Come down one tenth. Come down two tenths. Send. All right, I got it. I got it. Come point seven right up two tenths. Point seven right up two tenths from original or last shot. Let come total hold to center. Total hold to center, okay. Up. Send. Send same. Send same. Up. Send. Come down three tenths. Same hold. 0.7. Send. Moving to the next target. Target two. Nice, nice hit. All right, 24, maybe 25. Two hit. 25.8. Point eight, there we go. I need 1.1. Very good. Good All right, job, Mike. Hold, hold. Okay, I'm, I got plenty to do. All right. I'm sitting there. All right. Give me point nine right. Up. Hold. Point nine right. Send. Did you dial your windage? I did. I got nothing. You have nothing? Come. 
fold. Are you 25.6? Point eight, I'll bring it down to. Yep. Alright. Alright. Point 0.9 right. Up. Send. Send it. What do you need? What do you need? Right by us, outside the back of it. Yep. Come back. Point. Point seven right. Point seven right. Oh. Send. Send same. Send same. Impact. Send same. Are you dialed on your windage? I am. I think it shallowed up on us, but... Okay. I want point... A fat point eight five right. Come up. Come up one tenth. Hold, hold, hold. hold. Right. Are you 33.8 dialed? Uh, no, I'm 34. Come down two tenths. Okay. All right. Point eight right. Point eight right. Up. Send. Got nothing. Hold. We got four minutes. Stand by. Okay. We have four minutes left. We got six minutes left. Okay. Let's think about it. We're good. I got pretty bad mirage, by the way. Yeah, I do too. All right, it switched on us. I see it now. Seven right. Up. Send. Oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, just outside right leg. Can you give me a range distance? Uh, just outside right. That would be one point. Right leg. Right leg. Right leg is one point. Uh, one point uh, five. Okay. So from center, one point five. All right, give me, give me point two, point two right. One point two. Good elevation. One point two. Point. If it was one point five, and you were holding one seven, uh -huh. give me point two sorry, right. Sorry, sorry. To the right leg from what I was just holding. No, from center. From center. Uh, right leg from center is point. Uh, it's point two. So where did that just hit? Outside of the right leg standard. Okay, I got it. So it's coming at one. Okay. Up. Send it. Okay, just off right edge. Come back at point Up. seven. Send.
Jay, load. Send same. Point seven right. Yes! Yes! You go, boy! Nice, Mike! Yes! Oh, yes! That a boy, Mike! It was a. It was awesome. It, it felt great when we got when we got that two mile target. It was. There was some restraint involved because yeah. the the little button to push the bell is is just right there, and so when it's hit. I really just wanted to go like this whole time <laughs> the excitement, you yeah. know? Yeah, you know, it, it was it was all the embodiment of all the emotion of a four-year journey and all the roller coaster and everything that's gone into it. When we got that fifth round impact on two miles, it was just an explosion mm -hmm. of of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. it, it was the, the greatest moment. It was so exciting to have invested four years of your life and soul and problem solving and the journey and to go out and to hit that two mile plate in King of Two Mile yeah. was one of the greatest things ever. It's, yeah. it, it was truly amazing. It's, it's like you see this flashback of, of everything that went into one bullet. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You think about how much time and effort and money that we've all invested in, and I had done so with the, the goal of being at that point in time, at that place, to have that opportunity. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's remarkable. The rest of the world didn't matter in that moment. You know, it was so cool. And it, you know, it, it meant the world to us too, you know, the camaraderie out there. You know, it was so neat coming off the line and everybody's super excited for you. You're getting hugs, you're high-fiving, you're shaking hands. You know, everybody was so awesome. Everybody on that, on that, on the finals and even everybody who stayed, the whole group of people was just out there rooting for everybody. And it, it was neat to share that moment. You know, and ultimately, we didn't win you no. know we came in ninth which is awesome as you know a lot of people told us nobody ever does good on their first time at king of two miles so to come in ninth was really huge and to hit be one of only five teams that hit the mm -hmm. two mile plate was so amazing to us but more than all that it was just the experience with everybody it was the way some of the top shooters out there came together and all just had a great time together and had some great results and shot so well. You know, it's it's just an honor to be out there with so many incredible people. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we we did our process the way we wanted to. You know, mm -hmm. we we went out and we executed what we set out to execute. Four years of preparation and we executed the way we wanted to, and we checked that two mile box. Yeah. And that, I'm I'm watching this the the last target footage, you know the that first shot, I, I we didn't get any feedback on it and we had to we had to make an adjustment, the wind had switched around on us at this target again, our third shot came in, just wide right, our fourth target I just watched it I I remember it in my mind, hit just off the right edge of the plate. And we had stopped and said, wait a minute, during that shot string, the wind's changing. Let's figure out what's going on. We had a lot of time left. You know, we were, were able to manage the time. And we saw the third shot land. We moved in. I wish I had made a more aggressive correction because it just goes off the right edge. And then the fifth shot, you, what we call hit a bob. You got a bob. Bob, our third teammate, has the uncanny ability to shoot to, a bullseye. To shoot a bullseye, and not just shoot and hit in the bullseye. It'll be the middle. It will be in the middle, center punch the bullseye. Twenty nine hundred so, yard target. Bullseye is this big. If Bob's going to hit that plate, it'll be right freaking yes. here. It'll and be right he, in the middle. He like has, he is going to sink it. So Mike's like. You bobbed the target. Yes. <laughs> you know, that was our turn. You, Whenever you we hit, hit a bullseye, hit a we bob. bobbed the target. Yes, and out of total affection because he is uncanny at being able to do that. But 
you were able to center punch that two mile target. And it was the first hit at two yeah. miles of, of the day so far. So Yeah, I was the number six shooter and that was the first hit on the two mile plate. So that that was significant to us. Now it only means so much because you shoot in order. So it's not like everybody's shooting at the same time and you happen to be the first one, but it was it was really cool to be the first people that got it. You and I have been on this this journey and, and with Bob and I know Bob not being there when we got to call him after the run. Uh, that was an awesome experience being able to to share that with him. I wish he had been able to be there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing today? I'm doing good this morning. How are you doing? We're doing really good. Tell so me about it. We got the two mile plate. Oh wow. We hit them all. Like. Oh wow. We we hit each plate. Oh well, that's great. I am so proud of both of you. Is everybody shot The now? fact that, now that you know we were able to call and share that with him, um, absolutely excited for us. And and you know he's he's put time and effort in beyond what An anybody's going to be able to to measure or or, or explain. Um, Bob may not have been on the line, but Bob was on the line with us, absolutely. and he's been there every step of the way. You know he is. He is the driving force behind what we've done. He's the the wisdom in everything. While Mike yeah. and I are always trying to make these one-off crazy wind calls, he's like, guys, it's hit off the right side for five shots in a row. Bring it freaking to the left. Yes. You know, he's the wisdom behind all of it. Wait, but wait, we saw a change. The left. Yep. Hold uh -huh. off the left, you know, and so he was, he's always been with us, you know, whether whether it was physically or just in our hearts and in our minds and the guiding principles, we would have never been able to do this without him. We mm -hmm. wouldn't have been prepared without him. We wouldn't have wanted to do it without him, you know, and so yeah, to be able to call him and to tell him, we just hit the two mile plate, I'd have given you almost everything yeah. I own to be able to make that phone call. And so it was so neat to be able to make that one phone call that fulfills yep. four years worth of work to say everything you put in this and everything we did as a team came together and we checked that freaking two mile plate and it was awesome. He was he was excited as we were about where the run had been and we, you know, we didn't know where everybody else was going to end up but we felt like we had another good run. Certainly felt like we had had a good showing. I mean, here yeah. it is. You're you're standing with, you know, some incredible shooters, arguably the best shooters in the world, shoulder to shoulder with them, and and you you get in the final and you moved up from 14th to ninth, and separating ninth in and, and the the fourth position was like five or six hundred points. Yeah. Literally, if we had hit any other plate, we would have been up you know, four positions higher. If, you know, conversely, if we dropped a plate, we wouldn't have even been in the finals. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, you gotta goes, always balance that both out. both ways, but I, I think you had a great match. I mean, you know, you're, you were shooting lights out, and I, I think, you know, from a, from a team standpoint, whether you're shooting or I'm shooting, spotting, you know, for each other, we looked at it as a team. And we, we were both excited for the success of the other. And so, you know, we've got a lot of ideas and things we're, we're looking at doing. You know, honestly, we'll probably look at the possibility of expanding our team to add a couple more shooters. We're excited about another year. You know, it's fun to, to get back after it and to be able to go after it again. You know, and I know Everybody out there is going to be working hard this year. There are going to be a lot of guys shooting a lot of matches and pushing it. So we've got a pretty, pretty heavy challenge ahead of us if we expect to do well next year.